Metal on the outside, a mammoth battery, seemingly solid internals, a fingerprint scanner, and all at a great price. Is this really an awesome deal? Or is there more to the Lenovo Vibe P1 than the spec sheet indicates? Well, let's find out. But before we do, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name is Ash, this is C4E Tech, and you're watching my full review of the Lenovo Vibe P1. Let's get started. The Y P1 is not a small phone. It's almost 10 millimeters thick and weighs in at just under 190 grams. But that's excusable here due to the use of metal and the fact that it packs in a mammoth 5000 milliamp hour battery underneath. Solid. That's the word that comes to mind when you first pick a Y P1 up. The metal feels cool in hand. The curved back helps with ergonomics. But all that said, this is not a phone intended for single-handed usage. More often than not, you're gonna find yourself using it with both hands. Lenovo's added a toggle to the left. Now this activates Lenovo's version of the ultra power saving mode. The selection of apps is very limited here and it deactivates your data connection as well, making it a lot less functional than offerings from other manufacturers. Now add to it the fact that this phone sports a 5000 mAh battery kinda made me wonder why Lenovo would allocate a dedicated non-reprogrammable toggle for this. Weird. The Vibe P1 also has a fingerprint scanner built into the home key at the bottom. It reads the fingerprints without you having to even press the home key. So just place your key on the bottom and you're onto your home screen. Well, that's the theory at least. In reality, I found the fingerprint scanner a little inconsistent. There have been times where I've had to scan my finger multiple times. With the latest update, the performance has improved. But then again, I'd still rate it somewhere above the Galaxy S5, but below every other fingerprint scanner on a phone from this year. Before talking more about the functionality of this phone, let's actually talk specs. The Vi P1 is powered by a 64-bit Snapdragon 615 chip. Now that's four Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.5 GHz each, and another set of four Cortex-A53 cores clocked at 1.1 GHz each, coupled with an Adreno 405 GPU, and 2 gigs of RAM. We have 32 gigs of onboard storage and you can expand it further via microSD. The 615 is infamous for its heating issues, but thankfully I experienced none on the Vibe P1. It managed to even handle intensive games quite well, with only the most intensive of titles causing a few frames to be cropped. The audio via the internal speaker was acceptable, call quality and audio via the 3.5mm headphone jack were quite good. With that, we get to my major annoyance for the Vibe P1. The display. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a bad display, 5.5 inch IPS LCD covered by Gorilla Glass 3 with a full HD resolution, meaning a pixel density of 401 pixels per inch. That's nothing to scoff at. It's quite sharp, the colors are quite accurate, the black levels are good, and so is the contrast. Nothing to complain about the viewing angles either. So what's my problem with this display? The brightness, or rather Lenovo's ridiculous software control for the brightness. Now, this isn't the brightest of displays to begin with. Visibility outdoors is just about average, but that could have not been a major con if Lenovo's auto brightness wasn't a joke. It's not even close to usable unless you are in a completely dark room. Even at 100% brightness, the screen often feels a little too dim. This is not a problem with the panel itself though, because going into the settings, you can activate a super brightness mode and with this on, you can still adjust the brightness using the slider and the display becomes perfectly usable for the most part. It, but then again, if you do end up hitting auto brightness once and then disable it, the brightness reverts back to the default mode. So this would mean you'd have to do a lot of jumping, jumping back and forth from the settings menu. Now, I understand aggressively turning down the brightness on devices with puny little batteries, but the Vibe P1 has a mammoth 5000 mAh battery and the battery life is actually very good. So I really don't understand why Lenovo had to get this aggressive with the brightness. Like I said, the battery life is splendid. The standby drains very low, so with moderate usage, getting the Vibe P1 to last two days on a single charge is definitely possible. Even with my most intensive usage, I couldn't kill the battery in under a day on any of the seven days that I used this phone as my daily driver. By the way, Lenovo's also included a rocket charger in the box with the P1, and this lets you charge this mammoth 5000mAh battery from 0 to 100 in less than 2 hours. Sweet. Next up, let's talk cameras. The Vibe P1 sports a 13MP rear camera with a dual tone LED flash and phase deduction autofocus. The image is shot with this camera, turned out average. The details there, colors are accurate, but the dynamic range is severely lacking. 
The pictures are definitely usable, especially when under good lighting conditions, but I feel things could have been better. Under low light, as expected, there's a dip in quality, but it's still okay. The front-facing 5 megapixel shooter was again adequate. I really wish Lenovo had gone with a wide angle lens here. The rear camera can shoot 1080p videos and the video quality was mediocre. Not too bad, but not great either. As far as the user interface goes, nothing new. We've seen all this before, it gets the job done. The options are pretty straightforward, clean and well labeled. So like I've been saying so far with the camera, overall, I'd say this camera didn't really leave much of an impression. It's not good enough for me to praise it. At the same time, it's not bad enough for me to bash it. So with that, let's now talk software. The Vibe P1 runs on Android 5.1.1 with Lenovo's own Vibe UI on top. And Vibe UI has a new feature now. You can now press and hold anywhere on the home screen, select preferences and choose between Android and Vibe UI styles. The difference? An app drawer. I'm not a fan of having all my apps go right onto the home screen and this is definitely a welcome addition. You also have quite a bit of customization options, support for themes, you can choose to go with either the recent apps or menu key functionality for the capacitive keys. You have quick snap that lets you quickly take a picture by double pressing the volume keys with the screen off. We then have a micro screen mode which is basically the single handed mode from Samsung devices. Knock to light or double tap to wake. White touch or a floating icon that provides you quick access to some shortcuts. There's a lot more functionality baked in. What I do like about Vibe UI is the fact that despite offering a lot of functionality, it doesn't really slow the phone down. This is possibly one of the smoothest phones with Snapdragon 615 underneath. The user experience is just great. Most times apps open up quick without lag. And yes, two gigs of RAM might not be the best choice at the end of 2015. I'd have pre preferred three gigs on board, but Lenovo's optimized things well enough so that most times you aren't gonna notice the lack of the extra gig of RAM. Multitasking is pretty smooth. So overall, I'd say a job well done with the UI. So to sum it up, what do we have here? Under pros, we have a solid build, stellar, stellar battery, decent hardware, software that manages to make most of the said hardware, dual sims with micro SD, and at 15999 without invites or flash sales, a pretty decent price as well. Under cons, we have the display brightness, an unimpressive camera, a bit of bulk, and an unoriginal design. So could the Vibe P1 have been better? Definitely. But in my honest opinion, I do feel the pros outweigh the cons here, and I'm gonna say, the Vibe P1 is a phone you should consider if you're in the market for a phone in this price range. So that's just me though, what do you think, do you agree? If not, let me know why not in the comments below. So with that, we get to the end of this review, hope you guys liked it, hope you found it useful. If you did, do give this video a thumbs up and for more videos like this, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you do want to pick a Vibe P1 up, I'll leave direct links in the description below for both my viewers from India and the rest of the world. Do use them if you do want to help the channel out. So, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech, signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.